Hey friends, this is Eric White. This screencast is on the Open XML SDK Productivity Tool version 2.5. This tool is one of the four most important tools that I use as an Open XML developer. The other three tools are the Open XML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio. This tool is applicable to you if you have the professional version or greater of of Visual Studio. It doesn't work with the free version of Visual Studio. Another tool that can help, which is totally free and also is available on all platforms, is the OOXML Tools extension for Chrome. That enables you to drag and drop open XML files onto Chrome and explore all the parts and look at the markup inside those parts and edit the markup inside those parts. The third tool is the power tools for OpenXML commandlets. These are PowerShell commandlets that I keep around that do little tasks with OpenXML documents that make my job easier as a developer. You can download the OpenXML SDK productivity tool at the same location where you download the binary release of the OpenXML SDK. The easiest way to to find the link to download the OpenXML SDK productivity tool is just do a search in your favorite search engine. You'll see this link here on www.microsoft.com to download the OpenXML SDK version 2.5. When you get to this page, click the downloads button and you can see here this link to download the MSI for the OpenXML SDK tool. The the OpenXML SDK productivity tool has important functionality in the following five areas. First and foremost, it lets you look at the markup. Second, you can read the documentation about that markup. The productivity tool pulls in the OpenXML standard itself and enables you to navigate directly to the page in the standard about the markup that you're interested in. You can use the OpenXML SDK productivity tool to generate C-sharp code that will generate the markup that you're looking at. This can make your job as a developer much easier. You can compare to OpenXML documents. One of my favorite approaches when I need to understand something about the markup is that I will create a document without some specific feature. I'll then copy that document to a new document, and then I'll edit the new document, making the change that I'm specifically interested in. And then I'll compare those two documents using the productivity tool. Once I see the delta between those two documents, it will highlight the particular aspects of the markup that I'm interested in. And then I can go read about that markup. And last Last but not least, it has validation functionality. You can load a document and then validate that document using the OpenXML SDK productivity tool. This uses the same validation functionality that we see in the OpenXML SDK itself as an API. This just provides a convenient user interface to that validation functionality. Let's create an OpenXML document and then take a look at it in the productivity tool. An easy way to create a document with a specific feature that I'm interested in is to use the new docx commandlet in Power Tools for OpenXML to create a new document. If you have questions about installing and using the Power Tools for OpenXML commandlets, look at this screencast at this link. It'll give you instructions on how to easily download and install it. I'm going to open up a PowerShell integrated scripting environment at this location in my directory structure. The easiest way to do this is type PowerShell underscore ISE, and that will start an ISE at this location. I have this computer set up so that it automatically imports the OpenXML power tools when I start PowerShell. 
cell. Let's create a new docx. I'll create a document with an image and I'll tell the new docx commandlet to load and save it using Word. And this will ensure that the markup that I'm looking at is exactly as Word would save this document. I often pop back and forth between PowerShell and Windows Explorer. You can always start a Windows Explorer at a certain location just by typing explorer space dot and there we can see our with image dot docx. I'll drag this with image dot docx onto the productivity tool. We can see these curly braces up here and this denotes the package that we're looking at. If we hover over that node in the tree will see the path to that document. When we see these square brackets, these open and closed square brackets, this denotes a part in the package. If I expand a node in the tree here, I see the related parts also denoted with an open and closed square bracket. I can also see the root element of this part denoted by this less than and greater than. I can expand those elements and browse through the markup in that. If I hover over any one of these parts, I see the relationship ID and I also see the class name in the OpenXML SDK that represents that particular part. If I right click on an element, I have a couple of options here. I can look at the documentation. There are three tabs that open up for the documentation. First, we can see the API for that class that represents that particular element in the markup. I can click on the next tab over and I'll see the actual section in the OpenXML standard that is for that particular element in the markup. I can then read about that element. I can see all of its child elements and so on. Down here, there's a child element tree and there's also a parent element tree. So that way I can browse up and down through the standard looking at different elements and looking at the documentation for each of those elements. I can click on certain elements down here and I can click on implementer notes up here here and I can see additional information about how Word implements that particular element. So for instance, when I click on the alt chunk element, I see all of the various content types that are supported for alternative content chunks. Another thing that I can do is I can right click on one of these nodes and I can tell it I want to reflect code. And when I do this, I see two different things. First of all, at the top here, I see the actual markup. This is the same markup that we would see if we were to look at this document in the Open XML Package Editor Power Tool for Visual Studio, or if we were to look at this document in the OOXML Tools extension for Chrome. And in this pane down here, I can see the code that the productivity tool generated. And this code, if I execute this code, it will generate generate the markup for that particular element. This is a really convenient way to generate chunks of code for putting together a document assembly solution. Now let's look at the functionality that enables us to do a diff on two documents. I'll take this with image.docx. I'll copy and paste it. I am now going to modify with image dash copy. I'll open it in Word. I'll add a new paragraph at the beginning of this document. Now in the productivity tool, I can compare files. I'll tell it the before document I want with image dot docx. And for the after document, I want with image dash copy and I'll click OK. And now it will list out all of the parts in those two documents and show me which parts are different. So let's look at the part difference for the document.xml 
part. This is the main document part. And here we can see that new paragraph that I added with the hello world text in it. Last but not least, I can validate a document. I'm going to drag with image.docx onto the OOXML extension for Chrome. I'll expand the Word directory. I'll go into document.xml and I'm going to do something here to make this document invalid. I'm going to delete the paragraph start element right here and I'll go to the end of that and I'm going to delete the paragraph end element. So now we have the case where there is a run element that is a child of the body element and that's invalid. I can save it and then download it. I'll drag this with image.docx onto the productivity tool and now I can click validate and it tells me there's an error. The error is in the body element and it said it has an unknown element here. It has invalid child element with the word processing ML namespace and the colon R element. So it told us the error that it found in that document. In the settings menu up here, there are three different validation options. You can validate against Office 2007, 2010, or 2013. So there you have it. This is one of the most important tools that I use on a daily basis to do OpenXML development. Come back often to openxmldeveloper.org and see what new content we're producing. We always have lots of things in the works. You can follow OpenXML Dev on Twitter and you can follow me on Twitter at Eric White Dev. See you in the next video.